Okay, board verification. I've installed the, installed the board. I got it uh, where we can see it. I want to uh, follow the test procedure. The test procedure is H2O2-PWM-V2 uh, uh, Rev-A. It will be uh, located on the H2O2-PWM uh, webpage uh, just below um, specifications. So the first thing we need to do is verify our input voltage. Uh, input voltage for the test procedure should be 12 to 14 volts DC. I have dialed in uh, 13 volts. Um, once you verify it, you want to turn the power back off or use a switch from your power supply. Um, connect it up. If you're using a car battery, um, you need to take precautions. A car battery has an almost unlimited amount of current and that current can damage your board. Um, the best thing to do there is to run it through a 10 ohm resistor. Um, that will limit the current to the board and protect the board. Uh, so you'll run your ground to your ground and you'll run uh, the positive uh, lead from the battery uh, to a 10 ohm resistor. On the other side of the 10 ohm resistor you'll run that to your positive input on your board. All right, in this case, I have a power supply that has a limited amount of current, so there shouldn't be any issues. After verifying the 13 volts, um, you'll connect up again your ground here and your ground terminal. Um, your positive input goes to your positive lead. I have it clipped onto D1 on the positive side, positive terminal side. And again, I have uh, the same voltage, uh, 13 volts. So that's been verified. Um, step two is to make sure you got your positive and negative inputs in the correct positions. I do. Um, if you're going to hook it directly up to a board um, without a case, and you're just going to do a board calibration. Um, of course, you want to hook your positive and negative leads up according to the drawing. Um, you also have to make one other adjustment, and that is that uh, S plus and S minus, um, there won't be any wire there, so you'll need to put a temporary uh, jumper or shorted wire between S plus and S minus, and of course that needs to be removed after the test procedure. So, step four, a verify input voltage at U2 pin 1. U2 1 is your voltage regulator and pin 1 is the first one on your left as you're facing it and the camera's not in the same position but uh, it's this first pin here so the input voltage should be um, slightly less than the input voltage that you measured at D1 and that is because it's passing through D10. D10 is a, uh, a diode, voltage protection diode, so that uh, if you hook it up incorrectly, the voltage will stop there at the diode. So we're measuring the voltage drop across that, which is roughly 0.3 volts. It can be anywhere from um, 0.1 to 0.4 volts. So in this case, we're really 0.2. There's a 0.2 drop through D10. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is verify the 10 volt regulated uh, voltage. And that is the other end of uh, U2. It's pin 3. And we get 10 volts. Now, an alternate uh, place to test this is J1 pin C. And that's the second one from the left as you're facing it from this direction. And that there again is 10 volts. Now we need to set our pots up. So the potentiometers need to be into known positions. Okay, so we want to start with VR1. VR1 is your duty cycle. 
and BR1 is located right here. So, it says turn VR1 25 turns clockwise or until you feel or hear a clicking or feel a mechanical resistance. Okay, so I feel and hear the clicking. Next step is turn the frequency, VR2, 25 turns clockwise or until you feel or hear the clicking. And VR2 is this one right here. And I feel the clicking and the mechanical resistance. Each of these pots is uh, a little bit different in the way they react. Um, third, our next step, uh, turn VR3 current limit 25 turns counterclockwise. And the current limit is the middle pot, VR3. And we're going to turn it counterclockwise. Twenty-five turns or until you feel it click. Okay. This one I hear the clicking and I feel it resist. Okay. Alright, so the next step is to verify approximately ten volts at gate B and at gate A leave attached to gate A. So I go down to the gates. Remember the gates, you can get to them real easy right at the MOSFETs. Just follow your wire down. 10 volts or approximately 10 volts. And go on the other colored wire for gate A. 10 volts and they're almost you know, they are in this case identical they should be very close to each other and we leave attached to gate A okay adjust VR1 uh, counterclockwise um, 5 to 10 turns uh, the voltage at gate A will start to drop duty cycle is working so we take VR1 we turn it five turns counterclockwise. One, two, three, four, five, and it says up to ten turns. Six, and it's starting to drop. Seven. So that's an indication here at uh, five to ten turns that we start to drop. And that lets us know the duty cycle is working. Uh, verify, uh, once you get it down a little bit, verify that gate A and B are the same voltage. So 7.86 7.86 and there can be a slight variant in there uh, 10 20 millivolts is fine 